Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before my my name is Fajar Tunisnadika and my friend is Agung Yukastiawan and today <coughs> we will present our PowerPoint about grading and student evaluation. First is philosophy of grading. What should grades reflect? Groenland in 1998, a widely respected educational assessment specialist, gave the following advice. Best grades on student achievement and achievement only. Grades should represent the extent to which the intent learning outcomes were achieved by students. They should not be contaminated by student effort, tardiness, misbehavior, and other extraneous factors. <clears throat> if they are permitted to be to become part of the grid, the meaning of the grid as an indicator of achievement is lost. PP. Next, guidelines for selecting grading criteria. Number one, it is essential for all components of grading to be consistent with an institutional philosophy and or regulations. Number two, all of the components of a final grade need to be explicitly stated in writing to students at the beginning of a term of study. Number three, if your grading system includes items or D, stroke or G in the questionnaire above, it is important for you to recognize their subjectivity or improvement, behavior in class, effort or, and motivation. Number four, finally, consider allocation relatively small weights to items stroke so that a grade primarily reflects achievement or oral participation in class improvement behavior in class effort motivation functionality and attendance next calculating grades above and relative grading absolute grading the key to making an absolute grading system work is to be painstakingly clear on competence, competencies and objectives and on tests, tasks, and other assessment techniques that will figure into the formula for assigning a grade. Relative grading Relative grading is more commonly used than absolute grading. It has the advantage of allowing your own interpretation and of adjusting for unpredicted is or difficulty of a test. Next. <clears throat> teacher's perception of appropriate grade distribution. Most teachers bring to a test or a course evaluation and interpretation of estimate appropriate distributions follow that interpretation and make minor adjustments to compensate for such matters as unexpected unexpected difficult this prevailing attitude toward a relative grading system is well achieved and uncontroversial what is surprising however is that teachers preconceived notions of their own standard for grading often do not match their actual practice. Institutional expectation and constraints. A consideration of philosophies of grading and of procedures for calculating grades is not complete without a focus on the role of the institution in determining grades. Being, con being cognizant of an institutional 
philosophy of grading is an important step toward a consistent and fair evolution of your students. Next, cross-cultural factor and the question of difficulty. In many cultures, number one, it is unheard of to task a student to self-assess performance. Number two, the teacher assigned a grade and nobody questioned the teacher's criteria. Number three, the measure of a good teacher is one who can design a test that is so difficult that no student could achieve a perfect score. Number four, grades of a are reserved for a highly selected few. Number five, one single final examination is the accepted determinant of a student's entire course grade. Number six, the notion of a teacher's preparing students to do their best on a test is an educational contradiction. Okay. How do you gauge such difficulty as you design a classroom test that has no not bad not had the luxury of piloting and pre testing in usually combination of a number of possible factors? Number one experience as a teacher adaptness at design feasible tax. Number three, especially care in framing inter- items that are clear and relevant. Number four, mirroring in class tax that students have mastered. Number five, variation of text on the test itself. Number six, reference to the prior test in the same course. Number seven, a true review and preparation for the best. Number eight, knowledge of your student collective abilities. Number nine, a little bit of luck. What do the what do letter grades mean? Typically, instructional manual for teacher and student will list the following description of letter grades: A. Excellent. B. Good. C. Adequate. And D. In a inadequate, inadequate or unsatisfactory. A. Failing and unacceptable. Okay, alternative to letter grading. For assessment of a test, paper, report, extra class, exercise, or other formal score text, prim- the primary objective which is to offer formative feedback, the possibilities beyond a simple number or letter include. Number one, a teacher or marginal and or, or and comments. Number two, a teacher written reaction to student self assessment of performance. Number three, a teacher review of the test in the next class period. Number four, peer assessment of performance. Number five, self assessment of performance. Number six, teacher conference with the student. For summative assessment of a student at the at the end of the of a course, the same additional assessment can be made perhaps in modified forms. Number one, teacher marginal and or exam paper project comments. Number two, a teacher summative written evaluation remarks, and number three, a teacher written reaction to a student self assessment of performance in a course. Number four, a complete summative checklist of competencies. Number five, narrative evaluation of general performance on key objective.
Number six, a teacher conference with the student. Okay, next slide. A more detailed look is now appropriate for a few of summative alternative to creating particular self-assessment, narrative evaluation, checklist, and conference. Number one, self-assessment, self-assessment of and of course attainment of objective is recommended through the use of the following checklist, a guide journal entry, an SI and a teacher student conference. Number two, narrative evaluation. The argument in favor of this form of evaluation are apparent individualization, individualization, evaluation of multi multi multiple multiple objective of course face validity validity and respect potential potential. Number three checklist evaluation. The advantage of such uh, from our increase for practically and real reality real reliability while maintaining respect. Number four conference. Okay. Next slide. Some principles and guidelines for creating an evaluation. Number one, creating is not necessarily based based on universally accepted scale. Number two, creating in is sometimes subjective and context dependent. Number three, creating of this is often done on the curve. Number four, create reflects a teacher philosophy of creating. Number five. Creates reflect uh, institutional philosophy of creating. Okay, that's all our presentation. Thank you for watching. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.